Welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. 3 Minute Thursdays are a short breakdown of topics that you will see within your flight training here at UND. The goal is for you, the student, to have a better understanding of what it takes to become a safe, professional pilot. Hello, my name is Tyler Lauer. I'm a lead flight instructor at UND Aerospace. I'm excited to bring to you another episode of Three Minute Thursdays as we continue our series on holding. In the last episode, we talked about how ground speed will change every factor of the hold due to the fact that we always utilize a standard rate turn. Now, I know this may seem a little backwards, but this week we're gonna talk about entries into the hold. You see, I wanted you to have fundamental knowledge of how winds will affect the hold. So let's get started. Holds can be entered in one of three ways. Which way you choose is going to depend on which direction you are approaching the hold from. In order to decide which entry you will need to use, we will refer to the AIM section 5-3-8. The three methods are direct, parallel, and teardrop. To help simplify the decision making process, I'm going to teach you the hand rule. Put your hand out like this. Imagine that your holding fix is at the base of your thumb. Imagine your wrist is the holding pattern. Now, if you are coming from anywhere behind your thumb, you will use a direct entry. If you are between your thumb and index finger, you will use the teardrop entry. And finally, if you are between your index finger and the top of your wrist, you will use the parallel entry. Now that we have talked about how to figure out which entry you will use, let's talk about each entry. A direct entry is the easiest way to enter a hold. All you need to do is establish your holding speed within three minutes of your holding fix, fly direct to the fix, and start your outbound turn. It's that easy. The teardrop entry has you fly 30 degrees off of the outbound course. Now let's take some knowledge from the last video and apply it to this entry procedure. We know that we cannot just fly 30 degrees of heading off of the outbound course. Remember, we must account for the wind. One way to do this is to use the wind diamond to track 30 degrees off of the outbound course. Your flight instructor may have another way to calculate your new outbound heading. There is more than one way to accomplish this task. Once you cross the fix, start your timer and turn to your new outbound heading. You will fly this heading for one minute before making a standard rate turn back to the inbound course. The last way that we can enter a hold is the parallel entry. To perform a parallel entry, cross the fix and fly a heading that will allow you to track the outbound course. Remember the name of this entry you need to fly to the non-protected side of the hold and parallel the outbound course. The aim is not specific, but be realistic on how far away from the course you'll fly. Once again, you will fly for one minute, then begin a standard rate turn that will be greater than 180 degrees back to the inbound course. Holding is a complex instrument maneuver with many variables. Today, we covered three entry procedures. Here are a few key takeaways. Establish your holding speed within three minutes of arriving at the holding fix. Use the hand method to decide which entry you should use. Outbound legs of the entry should always be one minute and always account for the wind. Thank you for watching 3 Minute Thursdays. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered, please comment below. Remember, Fly safe, and we'll see you on the flight line. You see, I wanted you to have a... Sp an, oh, so close. Oh,